In the following, we are going to have a look on how to model a runoff river power plant in osmosis. The figure on this slide indicates that for modeling runoff river power plants, we need to define and consider the technology hydro runoff river and the fuel secondary electricity. These are related by setting the output activity ratio in the technology hydro runoff river to 1 for the fuel secondary electricity. The technology is then defined by inserting data for the parameter listed on this and the next slide. I will now go over them and comment them. We define the output activity ratio to 1 for secondary electricity as mentioned above. The capital cost represent the investment cost related to the technology. This occur only once in the technology lifetime. The fixed costs are reflecting the cost related to the operation and maintenance of the power plant and are defined per kilowatt or per gigawatt and year. Variable costs are representing costs that occur only while the technology is under operation. For hydro power plants, these are often zero, but it depends on the reporting scheme. The availability factor has been described before in this module. However, it is used to indicate the share of time on a scale of from zero to one in which the technology is available for production. This is to consider plain planned outages, for example, for maintenance. Three more parameters that are essential to define runoff river hydropower plants are the capacity factor, the capacity to activity unit, and the operational life. The capacity factor has been discussed before. It indicates the availability of the technology in a certain time slice. In the context of hydropower, this refers to the availability of water. The capacity to activity unit defines how much activity can occur by one unit of capacity in one year. In our model, we are using gigawatt for capacity and petajoule for energy. Thus, one gigawatt can provide 31.536 petajoule annually, which means that we set the capacity to activity unit to 31.536, as for every other power generating unit in our model. The operational life is used to indicate how long a technology is usable after installing it. This means we are indicating the technical lifetime. Apart from the parameter that need to be defined there are a couple of parameters that can be optionally defined if needed. The parameter residual capacity can be used to consider power plant capacities that are already installed in the represented energy system. The two parameter total annual max capacity and total annual min capacity can be used to set an upper or lower limit concerning the installed capacity of the technology. With a two parameter annual max capacity investment and total annual min capacity investment, the installation of new capacity can be limited or forced in on an annual base. Modeling hydro dams is slightly more complex than modeling runoff river power plants. Let's therefore first have a look on what technologies and fuels are needed in osmosis to represent a dam. In total, two technologies, one storage unit and two fuels are needed. The first technology can be called river and represents the source of water. The second technology, here called hydropower, can either fill the dam or use the stored water from the dam to generate electricity. The detailed parameterization will be described on the following slides. The definition of the technology that represents the river doesn't require the use of many parameters. The output activity ratio is set to 1 for the fuel water. 
to indicate that the output of the technology is water. So the capacity factor, the availability of water is considered. Important to define is also the total annual max capacity since it indicates the size of the river, which of course is not increasable. Additionally, there is also the option to limit the total annual flow of the river by using the parameter total technology annual activity upper limit. Hydropower plants can either store or hold back the water that comes from the river or they can let it run through and produce electricity. To represent this in osmosis, we need to use the feature of defining more than one mode of operation. This means one mode for filling the reservoir and one mode for producing electricity. Let's say in mode of operation 1, we are filling the reservoir with the water from our river technology. To do so, we define the input activity ratio for the fuel water and the output activity ratio for the fuel stored energy. To produce electricity in mode of operation 2, we set the output activity ratio for electricity to 1. As for other technologies, we also need to implement the capital cost, the fixed cost, the variable cost if applicable, the availability factor to account for planned outages, and the operational life to indicate the technical lifetime. Continuing the setup of our hydropower plant, we need to define the parameter technology to storage and technology from storage. The former needs to be set to 1 for the technology that is charging a specific storage unit and the later for the technology that is discharging the storage. Since the options to install hydropower dams are usually rather limited, it is also important to define the total annual max capacity according to the potential. Optionally, it is also possible to consider existing power plants by defining the parameter residual capacity. In case that new capacity is expected to be installed or that only a limited amount of capacity can be installed per year, the parameter total annual max capacity investment and total annual min capacity investment can be used to indicate the minimum or the maximum amount of capacity that needs to be or that can be installed within one year. After defining the river technology and the hydropower technology, which serves the purpose of filling and discharging the reservoir and producing electricity, we need to define the storage unit. The first step for including storage is to define three new sets. This is necessary to be able to indicate the model, the sequence of the time slices. The first set to be defined are the seasons. Each season considered in the model needs to be put in the set season with consequential numbers. In the next step, the day types considered need to be implemented in the set day types. This is to indicate how many different days we consider per season. This should be done with the consequential numbers as well. Lastly, we define the daily time brackets. Here we create one per time slice in the model. After defining the necessary sets on the previous slide, necessary parameter need to be defined. The conversion LS, conversion LD and conversion LH are used to indicate which time slice belongs to which season, day type and daily time bracket respectively. Furthermore, there are the storage specific parameter storage level start, storage max charge rate, storage max discharge rate. Min storage charge. These are used to characterize the technical specifications of the storage. Similar to the technologies, storage has the parameter capital cost storage, residual storage capacity, and operational life storage. These parameters allow to consider the storage independently from the charging and discharging technology. 
concluding, I would like to make some remarks on the importance and sensitivity of hydropower modeling. Fresh water is globally a scarce resource, therefore it is of high value. Osmosis allows detailed hydro resource modeling. This means that only hydropower plants can be considered, but also other water uses can be modeled. Analyzing different uses in one model leads to a more comprehensive picture and a better understanding of the water nexus. But to do so, it is crucial to have good and detailed data available. Thank you for listening to this module. You'll find further information on the Osmosis webpage and questions can be answered on the Google group.